So now we are broadcasting. Yeah, so in the waiting room. Oh, I have a few. I have one. I haven't seen Samin yet. Me? Maybe it's still loading. Her name is Maeve. M A E V E. Hmm. Okay. So if everyone is watching, we are still waiting for everyone else to join in. Oh, I see Maeve. Yeah. 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 So Maeve is actually. So why I think Maeve need to unjoin the audio. I think Maeve can hear but cannot speak. Hmm. Yeah. So if anyone want to speak, you can use the lift up hand and then we'll see it. Or you can also use the chat function. Okay, awesome. Oh, Maeve is raising hand. Oh, we actually have some people in already. Yep. Awesome, awesome. So, no, it's not. Oh, it's <laughs> All right. So, let me bring us to live on Facebook as well. Hi everyone here. Hi, we're just doing some final preparation and launching the Facebook Live so that other people can see this on Facebook as well. So if the attendees want to ask questions or say anything, how do they do that? Uh, they can raise up their hand if they want. And we will be able to see, like now, Maeve, then you can click allow to talk or they can chat. Ah, interesting. So you can uh, attend this. You can allow one person to talk, so just one person at a time. Okay. So I think for the attendees, if you click more, then you can lift up your hand later on when there's any question, but you can also click the chat or Q&A button where you can ask questions. Yes, this will be to ask questions uh, as much as you want. Um, with the amount of time we have, we'll try to cover as much as we can so that everyone can get as much value as possible out of this uh, hour. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're live on Facebook as well. Awesome. All right. So okay, let me stop yep. so you can. So, all right. So we're back here again, again. We're back here again. Me and Christina, both of us, are uh, here to share a little bit more with everybody here uh, about some issues that uh, pet owners face, dog owners face during this circuit breaker breaker period. For the last week, if you have missed it, we actually have a recording on our Facebook page. You can look back on that if you are looking at um, activities that you can do with your dog from now till the end of Circuit Breaker. This is to, uh, to reduce the chances of them having separation anxiety at the end of the Circuit Breaker where we all head back to work. Some little activities that you can try with your dogs from today onwards. As well as we also touched a little bit on how we can introduce nail clipping to our dogs uh, gradually without traumatizing them. And um, no, sorry, not nail clipping. We did shaving last week, right? So how we can introduce underpaw shaving to our, our dogs at home gradually so that we don't traumatize them in the process. For today, thank you for joining us if you're you already been here, if you're here. Uh, today wise, the topics that we'll be cover, covering on, okay, will be mainly uh, 
how to introduce the shaver to your dog gradually without traumatizing, okay? Uh, and how the tech, a little bit on the technical aspect on the shaving of the, the dog's body hair. And the second topic would be uh, how to introduce the, the nail grinder, okay? And we will also share a little bit about how you can actually help your dog grind its own nails. So um, I'm really excited to get started. And then uh, with me now, Christina, um, I've been friends with her for a few years and I really, really like her training methods. She makes use of uh, science, okay? and um, positive signals and reinforcements to help dogs uh, be healthy and happy. And um, yeah, let, let, let's get Christina to uh, start sharing something. Okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, of course, we have been friends with Desmond for a long time. And I, we share a lot of uh, students and clients together. And we often, you know, talk to each other how we can work together to make sure it's a fun experience. Even if it's not the most fun experience, we want we don't want them to be traumatized and we don't want them to be um, extremely stressed. A little bit of stress, but it should be a place where I want them to be able to uh, choose to be groomed rather than, you know, running away and everything. Uh, okay, let me see. I see some message here. So, do we, should I start or you want to start with the body shaving first? Hey, actually, I can start with the technical uh, aspect. Mm. That. Then we go on into uh, introducing the shaver so that uh, the experience is not so traumatizing for them. Okay, so with me here, I got a dummy dog. Okay, so this is, we call, I call him George. Ah. Okay, so his hair is really, really long. Okay. So it might be some of, it might be the case for some of you at home right now, you know, your dog's hair is like very unkempt and out of, like just very long and messy, okay? And you want to, you know, shorten the hair. But then maybe you have some questions as to how or what to do. So I'm not sure if uh, any one of you have uh, tried to cut your dog's hair at home. But let me just uh, share with you a little bit about the technical aspect of body fur shaving first. So when we talk about shaving the, the dog's body fur, right? We, of course, we need a pair of shaver, a clipper. We call this either a clipper or a shaver. Okay, so basically, uh, this tool here can help to shorten the hair on different areas of the dog. And um, it's actually very, very safe if used correctly. So I'll share with you a little bit about how the shaver works first. All right. This uh, is a cordless shaver. Okay. It has two blades, right? One is the silver. We call it a comb, silver comb. And one is the white color part, the cutting blade. So when we turn it on, okay, the cutting blade alternate left and right very quickly. Okay. And how does this shaver cut? Okay, you hold it like a pencil, and then when you run it over any surface, you hold it about 30 degrees, okay? And whatever that is comb, whatever that enters the comb, okay, gets cut by the, cut, the alternating cutting blade to the length that you set, okay? Some of these shavers have attachment combs or like glider combs, and you can fit that on, and usually for those combs, they have... Uh, lengths that they stay over there. Some of them is 3mm, 6mm, 9mm, 12mm, so on and so forth. And the length over there stated is usually the length of hair that is left. So with that, you can choose a suitable length and then slide it on and then hold it like a pencil, run it across the skin at a 30 degree angle, okay? And then whatever hair that enters the comb, gets cut by the cutting blade to the length that you actually fit on. Now that you know, yeah. 30 degree angle is important, right? Yes, yes. So if you, if you hold it at uh, this angle, you won't be able to cut effectively, okay? And if you, if you hold it like very flat, you know, the hair doesn't go in uh, op optimally, 
Okay. So along the way, Chris, if you if you feel that there may be any questions, you can just you can just ask me. Then I can answer on their behalf. Yeah. So this is just a rough, uh, like a 30, 30 degree is just a rough angle of gauge. Okay. On different parts of the dog, right? There is there is different. There may be different angles that is necessary. So we can explore that in a little bit. But meanwhile, I just want you to understand the general use of a shaver first. Okay? So with that in mind, right? Whatever hair that enters the comb gets cut by the cutting blade. So the next thing we need to think about is actually the hair, the whatever that is going into the comb. So if you get some thought about it, right? If the hair on the dog today is, is clumpy, let's say there is tangles or, or big clumps of hair, will the cutting, will the shaving be smooth or not? Not really, because only the hairs that are not clumpy can enter the, the comb to get cut by the blade. The hairs that are clumpy, it just kind of gets stuck. So what, what does that mean? That means that you need to actually brush and comb the coat thoroughly first. So if you have a slicker brush, you can actually brush the coat first. Okay, when we brush their coat, uh, we try and brush it in layers. And then we brush it outwards. We are just brushing the coat only. So we brush it layer by layer. There's many pet owners that just brush like this. I mean, this looks good on the outside, but actually, if you flip, if the hair is very thick and long, right? If you flip open, right? Inside is very clumpy and you miss out a lot. So we, we brush it layer by layer from the roots of the hairs to the ends. Layer by yeah. layer. To the roots to the end is very important. Yeah. Very important. So from the roots all the way to the ends. Okay. So once that is done, once the hair is all separated, that's when the shaver can, can easily feed the hair can easily fit into the, the comb and into the cutting blade. And that's when you get a nice, smooth shave. Okay, so that's the technical part of that. When it comes to understanding the dog's structure, so far, any questions? Yeah. Chris, do you have any questions? Or does anyone have no. any questions? so far. So far, it's yeah. okay. I'll proceed next to uh, maneuvering over the... Like method. What, what can you do? Like brushing could be quite painful if it's really matted, right? Yes. So when, depending on, um, depending on each dog's, uh, how do I say? You know, some of the dogs, like a little bit of tugging, they feel really pain really. So depending on the sensitivity of the dog, right? Hmm. Um, if, if there's a mat and you just try to comb, right, and, and, and your dog is really uncomfortable already with, with that little tugging, you can actually uh, use your slicker brush. You see that the slicker brush has many small pins, right? These small pins can help to like break up, break up the mats. So you can go gently on the area that is matted. Gently, okay, if it's a minor small mat. But if, if the mat today is like a big chunk, or like a 20 cent coin size, or even, or even to me, I, if there's a mat, I'll just shave it out already. I, I, don't, I don't want to extend the, the, amount of, the amount of time that the dog needs to be get, getting ruled, okay? So if I see a mat that is of a considerable size, maybe a 20 cent coin, I just shave it out. So you take the shaver, okay? You can put it to maybe a, 1.9 mm setting or 2 mm setting and then you hold close to the skin right you go find find that individual mat and then you try and find space between the mat and the skin okay with that with that okay sh on the shaver and shave to get the mat out okay yeah so just remove the mat using the shaver or if you don't have a shave shaver right you have a pair of scissors can do as well but you need to make sure that there is clearance, ample clearance between the mat and the skin before you cut. Yeah, because if the, if the mat is too close to the skin, you may injure the dog. Okay, yeah. because if, if it's too tight, then you can accidentally shave the uh, skin, right? Because anything that goes through the blade, it will be cut. 
exactly. So yeah. for mats, you have to be very, very careful and make sure that there's ample space between the skin and the mat before you shave or you cut using the scissors. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. So moving on, okay, a lot of you are trying to shave your dog's body hair. Can you see that this is the head? Okay, this is the head. Okay, and then the neck, and then the back, the butt, the legs, right? So when we shave, okay, I usually locate the bone at the back of the head. The bone at the back of the head is called the occiput, okay? And if your dog is uh, having like a little round teddy bear face, right? You can actually shave from the start, starting from the middle of the neck. Okay, if your dog generally has very short hair throughout the year, right? You can shave from the occiput. Okay, so for dogs with longer hair, you can shave from the middle of the neck. So this is the entire length of the neck. Okay, you shave from the middle. So from the middle, you draw a line, imaginary line. And then you start to shave like that. So shave down from the neck in a smooth direction like this. Okay, and then we usually follow the growth of the hair. So if you can see, I'm actually, if the hair grows this way, we just shave downwards like that. And then this little dip here, the tuck up, the elbow, this dip, you can shave inwards. So shave inwards, then from this side, shave down like this. One smooth direction. Okay, okay. For the entire side profile. Okay, for the front, we can shave down from the, if you can touch and feel the throat, maybe two fingers from below the throat, you can start to shave down as well. Yeah. <coughs> then it's important that the 30 degree angle is adjusted because now the chest is quite critical, right? Yeah, so for the chest, right, let's say the chest, usually their chest bone is round. It's, it's never like straight. So at every single angle, right, it's roughly about 30 degrees, roughly about there. Just follow the bone structure. Yeah. Okay. So that would be the technical part of the shaving. Uh, if I missed out anything, anyone can just feel free to ask. I'll try and answer them. Okay, hold on. I'm just having a few people who is not able to come in. I'm just gonna resend to them the link. Okay. How about from your side? Is there anyone who is not able to come? Let me check. Uh, <clears throat> they're actually able to watch it on Facebook, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. So I'm just. Okay, okay. Can they watch on Facebook if they can't come in. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna say that they can watch it on Facebook as well. Yeah, so uh, shaver wise, via, we can look at the questions on Facebook here as well. Yes, actually, there's some questions here on the Zoom webinar chat. Okay, let's see. Oh. We will talk about trimming the bottom of the paws. How to shave the butt area. Okay, this is your <laughs> area. Oh, where's that question? Is it on the... Under uh, Q&A, if you click it. Ah, yes. For the first time you as in a <laughs> webinar situation. It's very reverse, guys. Thanks. Okay, Vanessa, let's, let's answer that one at a time. Vanessa, will we talk about trimming the bottom of the paws? Hmm... We actually touched a little bit on it last week, right? So, um, yep. Vanessa, you can check out the, the video, the live video that we did uh, last week on Facebook. Uh, we, we spoke a little bit about how we can help to introduce the shaver for dogs um, and also how the tips that you, you can try to better remove the hair at the underpaws. Okay, so I hope that helps you. For Yilin, okay, how to shave the butt area. So, I'll just quickly touch on this, okay. Um, all dogs usually have a tail butt, but Josh doesn't have one. So, what we can do is, we can uh, 
what I usually do is I would pull the shaver like this. And then I'll, I'll, I'll part the hair with my fingers first. And then I'll try and find the anus area. Usually this area, there will be hair coming up, right? And then the shaver left and right. Just, just try and tease the hair to the left and tease the hair to the right. The setting of the shaver, you can set it to the, the, the closest length. Try not to graze the skin. Yeah. So that's what you can try for Yilin. Um, yeah, I think it's very sensitive as well. So you, you try not to cut the pinkish area, right? At least that's what I try to do. <laughs> like you go a little bit further. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the directions. Yes. So try and avoid the skin. Just tease the hair on the left and on the right. Expose the anus area and then you, you won't have that problem of the poop getting stuck. Yeah. When we buy a dog, you actually don't think that one day we need to, you know, shave the area around the butt. <laughs> Hug them, care about them. But then we're like, oh, you need to keep them clean. We need to keep them healthy. Then we, we do all these things as well. I know, right? Yeah, even I, as a behavior consultant, when I first get, of course, when I started, I wasn't a behavior consultant. And then, you know, the first few days, okay, pick up the poop, clean the pee, yes, all these are fine. And then comes the trimming the butt hair and then the expressing the anal glands. This didn't come when I purchased the dog. The, the, the one who sell the puppy didn't, didn't say all these things. Of course, you can get people to do it, but you know, you cannot, um, if your hair has a long hair, your, your dog has a long hair, you cannot go to the groomer all the time to do this. You can, but it's really, it's time consuming and it's also cost some money. So these are things that you find out later on that you need to do. I know. Okay. Uh, they, come with, uh, they come with so much things for us to do. Um, but uh, it's all worth it, right? At the end of the day. Yeah, so I see Yilin here say, we miss Desmond. How about trimming their wee wee area? Oh. <laughs> um, okay, the wee wee area, right? For girls, um, what for wee wee area a bit more difficult to explain here. I might I might do a separate one to to share with everyone, or I might um just get back to Yilin separately. Yeah. 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 I think this is a bit more tricky to explain. Might need a bit of time. Yes, I miss Cheeky Teddy Bear as well. Okay, let me see if I can make Joss up. I think we have a question from Laurel. Eh? Oh. Oh, hold on, let me see. Laurel is asking about the slicker brush. Oh, I didn't see that. No. Like the oh, yeah. That was on the chat. Okay. What did she say? She's asking about the slicker brush, whether the sharp pins will hurt or irritate the skin. Uh, shall I answer that? Yeah, you can answer that. I'll add a little bit later about that because I speak about them often as well. Okay, okay. So, uh, do I talk about it now? Okay. So, for the sticker brush, right? The sticker brush has, um, there's a few different type of types out there. So, some of them have the ball pins at the end. Some of them doesn't have. Like, for this one, it's quite sharp. So, if you're going to go direct on the skin, right? Yes, it will, it will hurt and you irritate the skin. So usually when we brush, right? We are actually brushing the hair only. We're not brushing the skin at all. So how do you do that? Okay. So let's say there's hair growing out of my skin now. I usually brush like this. So we, we tease the hair from the roots and then we brush out the hair. I'll show you on the dog. Okay. So, layer by layer, right, we will brush out. So, the point of contact for the, the sharp pins and the skin is very minimal. So, do this instead of this. Yeah. So, yeah. so in this case, you wouldn't irritate, you wouldn't irritate your skin. Yes, Laurel. We miss you and Avery. Ah, hope oh, we are doing well. Yeah, I make some noise and you are sleeping and get startled. You just did a, a small bark. Okay, so I was looking for my slicker brush as well. So I always tell them, um, 
I'm not sure how different is a uh, dog skin to our skin, but I always try to just brush it on your hand first and then see how it feels. So that you kind of know how much pressure you need to put. Uh, let me see. Oh, there's another question from Alicia. Um, and especially if the dog has very short hair, you actually don't need to push too hard. So yeah, I agree that um, it, you have to make sure you're brushing the hair and not the skin. So you have to kind of brush the hair. Yeah, so once you know how it feels roughly, then you will have a little bit more empathy on how it is because I've seen dog owner brush like, and then they tell me the dog really hates to be brushed and then I tried to brush it and then it was fine. It's because you just have to make sure the idea is you're brushing the hair. You don't have to brush the skin, you brush the hair. So yeah. that's the kind of slicker brush. Yeah, and also to add on, right, some of the dogs that have really short hair actually don't need to be brushed using the slicker brush. So we need to choose the correct tools for the correct kind of coat as well. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, straight to the brush and we're gonna go back to the paper. Just so I love using the mat for the dog because um, I can actually, if I want to shave, I don't have to lift up the leg. I could just shave it this way. So I like having this flexibility with the dog. Because Joyce is really old, so as much as possible, uh, I don't want to lift up any of his legs. So when I need to shave the paw, pad, the paw pad using an elevated area like this, I could just shave it without changing his position. Of course, when I shave the underbelly, I do want him to stand up, but most of the time I can have him not standing because standing too long for a senior dog is quite tiring. So, same thing with the shaver. I went through it earlier uh, last week that you have to make sure you know how to expose your dog to the tool. So if you're talking about a shaver, three elements, same like last week, I'm just gonna go through it very briefly. The vision is something, so vision, three. Of course, Joss is not responding to it, but some dogs can get really scared by the vision of a shaver. Vision. Good. So now when I want to add the noise, I want to put the shiver a little bit further. Imagine a drill putting near your face. If someone put a drill near your face, that would be really scary. So just want to make sure you don't put it like this, but a little distance. Imagine if someone put a drill in front of your face and every time the drill is on, you get $1,000. After a while, I'll be like, yeah, you know, this drill is not too bad because every time this drill noise is on, I get $1,000 and he didn't actually drill me or harm me anyway. So that's, that's important. So now I go a little bit nearer. So if I go a little bit nearer and the dog kind of flinch and like move away, you want to go a bit further again, right? So that's the, um, noise and then remember there's the feeling of the metal and the vibration so off first let him feel that cold metal you can use anything to let your dog feel the uh, cold metal like spoon or maybe something of metal uh, material before you actually shave good so it will be a little bit itchy so just uh, front paw is a lot more sensitive than the back paw. So every time I kind of do this, even just touching, he'll like pull back because it's a little bit itchy. So I try to do that very quickly. Good boy, see? So again, so now I'm, I'm training him to be okay here, but what about the body? So with the body, you don't want to scare the dog and like, okay, we should do it when the dog doesn't see it. You want to make sure that the dog knows what you're doing. Otherwise, when you just caught them off guard when they're sleeping, they get startled and then you can injure them by mistake, right? 
So yes, they can see it, they can feel it here, but it will feel different. The same like if I touch you on your face and I touch you on your palm or your um, toes or your feet area, uh, different parts has different sensitivities. So you have to make sure that um, you train it in a very small portion in different area. And you don't want to shave the, the dog's whole body if the dog is very fidgety and very wary. So let's say if today for Jaws, maybe I'm just going to shave a little bit on the paw and maybe sanitary trim on the backside and I'll do the other um, the other shaving uh, procedure in another time. So for this one, I'm gonna also do here, let him feel. So this is not switch on and you can see Joss is like, what's that? Good boy. Then I'll do again. So of course, that's not the degree angle like Desmond say. It should be like this. Am I holding it correctly? Yes, you are. <laughs> Good. So, of course, I'm not going to shave Josh because his hair is not supposed to be shaven. But <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to, otherwise my husband will later kill me after this session. I'm just going to switch it on. And the, the idea is I want him to feel the vibration and the metal. Just now he already felt the vibration. Now I want, uh, just now he already felt the metal. Now I want him to feel the vibration. So the back of the shaver will have some vibration as well. So that's what I often do so that they know what's happening. And if you see, I give the treat fairly quickly so that before he decides whether this is good or bad, or bad, he will like, oh, it's actually pretty good before he has a concrete opinion on what's happening. But of course, you, you cannot break his trust. You cannot harm him or cause any pain to him. And you see, just still kind of look like, what's that? So imagine if I just shave him. And why is just behaving this way? Because so far I've only trained to shave the paws and the sanitary area. And why is that so? Because just doesn't need shaving on the body. So it's very important and you can see he's very well trained on shaving all other parts but the body I've never trained it before. Okay so that's all from me for shaving. What's our next agenda? Is it nail trimming? Yeah, be nail trimming, nail filing, and then uh, we'll show them how they can actually um, DIY, you know, for their dogs, so that dogs can file their nails themselves. Yes, yeah. is there any question? Let me check. Yeah, is there any questions with regards to uh, introducing the shaver for body shaving from anyone? Okay. Oh, there's one question. Is it better to trim the fur before or after showering the dog? <clears throat> okay, before or after showering. Hmm. Does, it have to be dry? Do you, uh, does the fur have to be dry when you shave the dog? Okay, the thing is, I would recommend the fur to be dry before shaving because if the fur is wet, uh, unless you are doing a very clean shave, like bota or really very short shave, right? If the fur is wet, it's usually clumpy because the hair stick together when it's wet. So in that case, like just like just now how I explained it, right? If it doesn't get into the comb smoothly, the end result of the shaving is going to be a bit choppy. So I would recommend to shave when it's dry. But whether or not, uh, we shave it before or after the bath. Um, if you're doing it at home on your own, I'll actually recommend you to do the shave before. Because usually if you shave after shaving, right, there'll be a lot of loose hair. And depending on the hair length that you're shaving to, right, sometimes the loose hair may be very small pieces and some of the loose hair can be a bit prickly. So with that, there may be a chance that sometimes uh, our dog's skin may be a little bit 
how to say, like maybe if you're pricked by the prickly hair, then for dogs with very sensitive skin, right, the dog will start to feel like, yeah, that is very irritating over there. And then they start to lick and then it becomes a problem. So I would say if you're doing it at home on your own and you're shaving, not, and you're shaving your dog's hair on your own, right, just, just do it before the bath. And then after the bath, just, just let them uh, relax. Don't need to touch up. Yeah. Furthermore, after the bath, they are clean already and, don't, not necessarily you want to like shave them again. Yeah, just do it before the bath will be better. Yeah, okay. this question is from Facebook or from Zoom. This one is from Zoom, but let's see if there is any question from Facebook. Um, okay, as we have no assistant, so we have to do everything ourselves. Oh, please bear with us. Uh, yeah, I think I don't see any questions so far. Okay, no worries. Let's carry on with the questions we have here. We still have a few. So uh, there's one from hold on yeah. one from Alicia. It says Koda likes to sniff the scissor when we trim his fur, and then try to play with the scissor like. It's a toy. Yeah, so I covered that a little bit last week. But I can um, show it again. So this one is a little bit different, but the same has suction cup behind, so you can paste it on anything. And you can apply anything here. You can freeze it or don't freeze it, depending on how long you plan to keep your dog occupied. And I have this peanut butter, which is like, no sugar, no salt, probably doesn't taste nice for us, but the dog still love it, so that's very important. So, if you're doing this for something long, I would suggest freeze it, otherwise just apply it like that. And you can apply more, but Joss is on diet, so he's not supposed to eat that much. I'm just going to apply a little bit. And let me move you to this angle. You can actually paste it onto anything like that. You can paste it on some a shower area or a um, glass or door, anything that is smooth. Just you want this? Like just yeah. uh, is 11 and he has arthritis, so occasionally he doesn't feel like getting up, but most of the time he's quite um, happy to walk. Yeah. <laughs> so you can do it like this while you are, you know, brushing them and doing other things. <laughs> so if your dog is a golden retriever, this may take very fast, but Joss is a fine dining type of dog, so he's very slow with it. Okay. <laughs> so this will be a good uh, diversion for their attention while we are doing the whatever grooming procedures for them. Yeah, and especially for the spaniel, putting it on this angle protect their ear from getting the teeth. Mm -hmm. So I like to put it there. If I do it here, all his ear is going to go inside. <laughs> Okay, so now, is there any other question? I think we can move on to the nail part now. Okay, so give me a minute. All right, I just want to get some drawing materials. Um, okay, we are going on to the nails now, okay, and as usual, we're going to cover a little bit about the technical portion of that as well, before we go on to how we can introduce it um, in a less traumatizing way. Okay, so basically, we want to look at the structure of a nail first. Okay, so now a nail is usually looks like that. 
Okay. And of course, inside every nail, there is, there is a quick. So this quick is also called like the vein. Okay. It has blood flow in there. And if you cut on it, it hurts. It's just like how if we cut very, if we cut really deep for hours, it hurts as well. So for them also, they have like sensory uh, nerves over here on the quick. So when we are cutting the nails, we need to bear in mind this. Okay. Um, when we cut it from the side profile, right, the thing you want to take note of is the angle of cut. The angle of cut is actually, it's not, it's not very crucial. The angle of cut is not like super crucial because a lot of people, a lot of pet owners may be very worried about like, oh, whether should I cut this angle or this angle or this angle. And then they take, uh, because of that, they take very, very long to, to decide and then they hesitate. And all this time that you take, um, it actually extends the, the time that, um, that you cut his nails, which may extend the, um, yeah, which is not necessary. If you can do it quickly and, and you can do it quickly as fast as you can, you can, you can just do that instead of extending it for too long. But anyway, let's move on. The angle of cut, if it's any of these, right, it's actually all right. Yeah, like any of these angle is all right. You just want to make sure you don't go the extreme. Like when you cut it ex extreme like this, then, then it's no go. Okay, so as long as it's straight, right, it's fine. So at the end of the day, the nail should look something like, like this. Okay. Yeah, so it should look like that. And then we usually file the nails to round, round the edges as well. So the reason why we round the edges is because firstly, we don't want them to scratch themselves. Okay, a lot of them, uh, if they, after grooming, if they go home without their nails filed or not filed properly, right? Especially the back, the back paws, they, when, after they scratch themselves, the, the skin will become red and then it may become inflamed, so on and so forth. And then for the front nails, of course, you know, they scratch you, they scratch people in the family, okay? They scratch uh, their, their companions at home. So we want to make sure that their nails are felt as much as we can as well. Okay, and then um, any questions so far for the side profile? Um, so how, how much allowance do you think you should give between the quick and the nail? Because when they walk, they also automatically file, right? So we don't want them to walk and then have the nail bleed. Okay, because today's session is more of like maintenance so we're not talking about professional nail clipping right I mean, i'm just going to share with you guys a little bit about the rule of thumb so what is enough okay so for professionals like us right for some of the dogs with like nails where we can see the quick we usually go very close so maybe about one or two mm buffer only hmm. but it really depends on the dog as well sometimes you cut one mm buffer right they they feel it because of the nerves so we then adjust accordingly for each and every dog. But then again, there's also that group of dogs that have black or brown nails where you cannot see the quick. So for those dogs, it's really a bit more tricky as to how much buffer to leave, okay? But let's talk about the rule of thumb here for pet owners at home watching today, right? This is the ground, okay? So we need to understand that um, when the dogs walk, right? They usually walk a little bit on like tiptoe, okay? So if the nails get really, really long, okay, they start to push the back and they walk on their heels. So when they walk on their heels, it, it causes uh, unnecessary tension on the legs and the back. Okay? And when the dogs are uncomfortable like that, they don't tell you. Okay? They just take it. And then over the years, then it really uh, has an impact on the, the body. Yeah. So remember, as long as the nail is away from the ground, right? As long as there's a space between the nail and the ground, okay, that will be good enough. So like this is a rule of thumb. As long as you can cut the nail until it's away from the ground when it's standing, okay, mm -hmm. that is relatively good enough la, for now. Yeah. So this will be the rule of thumb for you. So don't cut lesser <laughs> if you are not familiar with it. It's better rather yes. than you cut much and then the nail bleed. Yes, yes. 
Yeah. So that's for the side profile. And then for the front profile, right? Um, now, let's talk a little bit about the nail clipper. Okay. So now, imagine, imagine this is the nail. Okay. And then I'm going to draw some lines on the nail to indicate the end of the quick. So when we put our nail clipper in for the side profile, it's quite simple, straightforward, just like this image here, okay? The angle of cut, okay? You put it in, you cut. It's about straight like this, okay? That'd be good enough. But then for the front, okay, when we put in, this is the part where it's, you have to take note. When you put in the nail clipper, it has to be straight in like that. You can put in any angle like this, however you want to position, but the this nail clipper needs to be perpendicular to the nail. Okay, it cannot be like this or it cannot be like that. It needs to be straight down, straight in, and then cut. So as you can see, the cutting is also a very swift action. So you have to cut it fast. Okay, when you go down, cut it fast. Okay, so this is the usage of the nail clipper. And then for the nail grinder wise, maybe Christina, you can you can cover a little bit about that and the filing. Yeah. So there's various nail grinder. Um, I like to use the one with the cap. Mainly because I'm a professional groomer. So I just want to make sure it's safe for the dog in front of me. Um, and this is quite quiet. Um, but take into account when you're actually trimming, grinding the nails, actually a lot louder. So I learned this from my mentor, Laura Monaco Torelli. So um, she said, you know, why don't you try it first and see how it sounds when it's cutting a nail. So this is just a penny. Uh, the nail, the amount you cut after I compare with let's say three seconds of trimming of penny and three seconds of trimming of nail, it cuts about the same amount. So that's how you know, because you don't want to like trim for a very long time and you actually don't know how much you're cutting because it becomes dust, you can you actually see how much. And you also want to feel the vibration. Uh, you want to know how, how, what does your dog feel when you are cutting? And I, I always feel that way. Let me see how it feels so I know how to make them feel better about it, right? So try with, you can do macaroni, penny, maybe not spaghetti, that's too thin, but macaroni and penny are fine. So you just want to... So you want to practice yourself, you want to improve your technical skills before you apply it on an actual live animal. So then you want to see is better, is it better from this angle? And if you try, it's actually a lot of vibration, even though this is it's already one of the quieter and not very, uh, you don't feel so much vibration, but it's important to me, you have to stabilize the nail. Because if you don't stabilize the nail, let's say I hold here really far, what's gonna happen is like, it's gonna move a lot and the dog feels it. And it's also important that when you cut, you don't do like this. Like, okay, I'm exaggerating here, but the dog feel that a lot more, right? Rather than if you just, I always do three seconds. One, two, three, stop. And you can hear when I'm doing this, just are you helping yourself to be not better? No. Um, so you want to make sure you don't, once you make contact, you stay with for three seconds so you don't keep jerking it. So just one, two, three, stop. And you can see that's the amount I cut within three seconds. This is the sharp penny. So for most dogs, this is enough. It will take their nail off the ground and it's enough. So it depends on how long the nail is uh, as well, of course. And you notice the noise that it makes is very different compared to where you actually... So when you're practicing on how loud, um, like getting them used to the noise, just switching this on is not enough. You have to actually grind something so that it's closer to an actual live uh, grinding noise. Okay, so now, 
So I think this will uh, answer some of Anne's question about how to get a dog used to nail grinding. And if your dog is really difficult, um, well, and it's one of my students, so we have to work on it a little bit more. And again, this session does not replace uh, professional help, especially if your dog has very uh, strong apprehension towards grooming. Okay. Just come, it's your turn again. Go to men. <laughs> okay, so it's more important that you can see Joss than to see me at the moment. Can you go a little bit here? Yes. So same thing. Noise first. Or visual first. Visual. Good boy. Touch. Good boy. Again, if you don't have to lift up the dog's uh, hop, you don't have to lift it up. Especially if they're in this position and you can just grind it. After the visual, now I want to let him hear the noise. And then the vibration. So I put the cap back. So you may think that this is a lot of work. Why do I have to do this? Can I just grab them and then file them? For most of the time, you can do it once, but you will never be able to do it again. So you can always do it once because they don't know what to expect, but the next time they'll be prepared. It's almost like if I come to Desmond's house and then I slap his face, the first time he'll be too startled to do anything, right? <laughs> like, what just happened? And her, his response is probably just, you know, keep quiet or just, just try not to get slapped again. But the next time if I ring his doorbell and then he look at me, two things may happen. He may refuse to open the door at all. He may run away if, we, if I see him on the, on the street. And the third thing is he may just decide to, you know, try to punch me before I punch him, right? <laughs> because what else can you do? You can either try to avoid, you can try to run, but if there's no other choice, he will like, okay, if you're, if you're gonna slap me, I'm, I'm gonna fight back. And maybe you will call the police, but dogs cannot call the police, so that's not an option for them. <laughs> so, uh, it's like this is an investment so that for your future grooming it will be much easier and you can do like one two minute session it's not a big deal and they think of it as something fun if you see Joss here I'm actually letting him I'm, uh, I'm letting him uh, decide whether she wants to stay here or he wants to move away nail grinding any grooming is not his favorite thing but um, he knows that when he had enough I will always allow him to stop. So now, let's try to grind the nail. So if just started to feel uncomfortable and he made a break, I always give him a break. Good. And because just feel empowered that he can make decision and take control, he will come back when he's ready and if he's, let's say, oh, you're going to cut all my nail now, and that's too tiring, and he will just walk away, then I'll say, okay, maybe another time. So to a certain extent, Josh, Josh is uh, allowed to like walk away when he's enough, uh, when he feels that he needs some space. So it's kind of like he's trying, he's now staying because he actually wants to instead of because he he's obliged to. Yeah, so he, he gives me consent that, okay, you can groom me now, and part of that consent is the mat. So he knows uh, if he doesn't want to go on the mat, then I will not do anything. If he wants to go onto the mat, means he wants, he said, okay, now you can, you can do this to me. So it's, you have to imagine, if we go to the hair salon, 
for one hour of hair haircut. That's already quite long, right? Imagine what dog have to go through. It's not just cutting the hair, it's showering, it's, it's a lot of things. So of course, um, <clears throat> now if I ask Josh to do it for one or two hours, he'll probably be okay um, because I've trained him a lot, but I cannot have him, like let's say the first time he's groomed, I'm gonna cut his nail, shave him, shower him, dry him. That's quite a lot for a puppy, especially if it's a poodle, then you need to do a lot of scissoring and everything, and that's uh, a lot for them. Okay, let, let's see if there's any question. Oh, you say bear's nail is black. Okay, this one you've answered. You say bear's nail are black. How do you know how much uh, to cut without hurting the vein? You covered this uh, just now, right? Oh, from or, uh, Ah, okay. So for bear, right, you really need to observe how, how long his nails are when he is standing on the ground. If it's still away from the ground, you don't really need to cut it first, okay? If it's touching the ground really, you probably just take away an mm of nail. That will be good enough. Or you just grind down by one mm. Yeah, that will be uh, good enough. And I know for sure you won't hurt him because, um, I mean, Bear has been here before and uh, I know usually there's quite a bit of clearance from the ground after his nails are cut. But really just to be safe during this period as you're doing it on your own, really to avoid traumatizing him or avoid any risk of any like bleeding, just take it down with the grinder, okay, or the nail clipper in the correct method uh, that we share with you. And then just get it off the ground a little bit will, will help. Yeah, and you for sure you won't hurt him. Yeah. And I really like the, the point that you brought up about the nail grinding. You know, you use the pasta to feel how it's like um, before you do it on the nail itself, right? And like this is the nail example. And then really to hold it firmly um, so that the vibration is reduced and more stable that way as compared to like, like that or like, like this, you know? So this is really what the owners need to avoid because all these things that you do result in more greater uh, traumatic experiences. So the little, little things that y'all can try is just like to hold it firmly and to use it firmly and, and time it for a few seconds, right? You were saying putting the, putting the grinder for a few seconds and then... Max, and then you want to reassess whether it's short enough. Most of the time it's really short enough. Okay. There's no question, I'll go to the next one, which is filing their own nail. Okay. Um, just like, ready to do it now. Awesome. Are you ready? <laughs> so, um, again, this is from my mentor, Laura Monica Torelli. He's the one who teach me uh, how to uh, use such method. So this is just a chopping board and you apply sandpaper on it. There's different roughness of sandpaper that you can try. So I can't remember which one, but you can get this at any hardware store and any cheap chopping board. You can use the wooden one. I just like the silicone one because it's not so hard, especially for older dog. So what you want is you teach your dog to scratch here, right? So if they know how to give paw, that's a good start. <laughs> good puppy. So what you don't want is you don't want them to file their paw pads <laughs> because what we want is for them to file their nail. So by placing the, just you're very greedy. By placing the board this way, you will avoid having things like this, because if they do this, it will go down, right? So this could be a fun game because a lot of dogs like to scratch. So I'm going to say, just target. Can you, can you target? <laughs> okay. Target. One more? Can we do one more? So of course, um, this is maybe the second time Just has done it. He has never done this before. 
So what you see is like real progression of training. Wow, this no one? Problem. Like it. Okay, so why is he only using the this part? Sometimes we get upset, like, why is he doing this? Why he doesn't want to give this ball? Where else he can? But if you see, this is the way he lies down. So, he's actually bearing weight here. Because all of the other, uh, the legs are there. Right? So, it's difficult for him to lift this ball. So, we have to be a bit more understanding that way. You see, why is the dog doing this way? What can you do? You can maybe ask him to sit and then reposition him so that he doesn't, lie down in a way that puts a lot of weight on one side. Okay, let's just try, try one more time, Yoshi. Try again. Here. Yeah. One more time. <laughs> You're so cute. One more. Yes. <laughs> so, um, maybe for now, I give him treat every two scratch, but eventually I want him to like scratch a few times before he get a treat. And some dogs actually like, use both their paws to like <laughs> so it actually can file quite fast that way so it's something that you can train the only thing that you cannot cut here is the dew claw mm -hmm. and i tend to angle it differently so that the nail are filed quite evenly as well hey joss very good boy you like kiss? Mm -hmm. it's a very good method for um dog owners who have dogs that are very afraid of getting their paws touched. Yeah. So if their dogs are like motivated with food, right? Uh we, we can try to use this method. How about if they are not food motivated? How how can we actually do this? I think dogs who are picky but very seldom that they are really not motivated. The reason is usually they are stressed. They're too stressed to eat. Like if you if your dog can eat anything, but as soon as they are in the vet clinic, they stop eating. It's just too much stress. So in that way, um, you just want to do it really slowly. For example, maybe use the other side and just let the dog walk over it. As soon as he touches, um, let's say he's walking, walking here, and then he touches, he step on it, he can get a treat. Step on it, you can get a treat before you flip it to the other side. And then slowly angle it so he's actually scratching this side first before scratching this part. So for everything uh, that we train, you want to do it slowly and you, you don't want to do too long. So if I ask Josh to do this for like non-stop for 15 minutes, I think he'll be quite tired. He's 11 years old and there is a certain range of movement that's not comfortable if done too long. Um, even for, uh, but for puppies, the opposite um, problem. They just keep, you know, they can't stay still. So for puppies, definitely use uh, tools so that they can stay still until they're able to stay calm on their own like Josh. But Josh really hates grooming. So if Josh can do it, your dog can do it too. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, what I can take away would probably be like, we can break down the, the thing that we want to help them with into like really, really small steps. Like showing them, showing them the item first or even for them going close to it. All these little, little steps, they can build on uh, such that uh, we can actually get it done later on. But we need to um, take it slow, take it gradual so that they can actually be not afraid of whatever that you want to do but actually curious or maybe even like excited a, a little bit like happy and wanting to like play that kind of thinking and also the food motivation wise really what you're saying is um actually most dogs will want to eat right and it's really their state of mind when you're giving them the food whether or not they want to eat Okay. When, when you have higher value food, for example, if your dog usually eats kibbles, and then for grooming, maybe some fresh meat, uh, freshly boiled meat, that, that will help as well. So last time when I take out the nail grinder, Joss will run, and not like run away, he'll run upstairs and hide behind my husband. 
And then I'll be like, oh my God, this has to change. It's like, I'm the bad guy. He's the protector of the dog. And obviously it's not good for just because he's stressed. So we do it really slowly. And of course this helps uh, for groomers as well, because if whatever you do at home, small bit by bit, it helps the groomer uh, to be able to do their job better. And it helps the dog as well to be less stressed. Okay, we have one question. Uh, how rough is the sandpaper? So this really also happen, uh, depends on your dog. Jaws is small, so I, I can't remember, but so if this is not, this is not the most rough, like maybe medium. But if my dog Millie, the golden retriever, his nail, her nails are a lot harder and bigger. So I use something that's a little bit rougher, but it depends on your dog. You can uh, buy a few and then just try a little bit, like uh, cut a small piece and just file it using your hand and see how it is. Uh, let me see if there are any other question. Uh, how long can we train with the clipper of our grinder a day? So you work with the dog in front of you. The question is how long can we train with the dog? So if I have a puppy that is two months old, I would do maybe seconds, like 10 to 15 seconds. And if I work with a dog that is extremely scared, you also want to just do um, less than 60 seconds, definitely. Maybe um, up to 10 repetition, but shorter sessions are always better. So if you want to do three repetition, that's good. Five is good. Uh, seven is good, but anything more than 10 at one go uh, usually is too much if the dog is either too active or too fearful. Um, how many times a day? So generally, once a day is good. If you can go do twice a day, that would be good. But once a day is enough. And you just have to make sure what I did just now, like do the dog give me consent. If at some point just decided I want to walk away, then I'm going to stop. Because um, it's important that dogs feel empowered, that they can come back if they need to. But now if I uh, take my nail grinder, Jos and Millie will be queuing and then we'll be like, cut my nail first. No, cut my nail first. So it was really a joy for me to see that. And I can tell that still this is not their favorite thing, but um, payment is good. So, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and they also learn I'm not like, harming them, I'm not like cutting them, you know, so the trust is there and there's payment after that. That's awesome. Anna is also asking whether do you need to put uh, your dog on a high table or train just on the floor because he will run away. So if he will run away means he doesn't really like uh, the grooming procedure. So it's, so if you will run away, put it's not really about putting him on table on a low floor. He will still run away, right? <laughs> and it's, it's, you just have to practice teaching him to stay calm. And for, a, sounds like it's a very fearful dog. So you, you want to keep it two, three times. Yay, treats. And then make sure after that he gets uh, not just treat, but afterwards you do like a little bit of fetch, very fun, and then stop. So for a dog that's extremely like they will run away, you just maybe just hold the nail clipper one time, hold the nail clipper, treat, hold the nail clipper, show him, treat, show the dog, treat, three times, and then play fetch, play tuck, do something really fun. The reinforcement is not just um, at that very moment, but also what happened right after. Um, for Joss, for example, a lot of time I couldn't feed him treats if he needs to have ultrasound at the vet. So the reinforcement come right after, but I built this um, sequence very tightly. Every time we go to the vet, afterwards we go to the beach. <laughs> Every time we go to the vet, afterward we go to have you know a brunch in Sentosa. So, so he he learned okay, it's a delayed gratification, and I, I just have to make sure I go through this vet. Uh, he has to be fasted. He cannot eat, so he have have that done. It's not the best thing, but he knows what comes after that. That's nice. All right. So are there any other questions anywhere? Let's take a look. There's so many avenue. Um, Hara, okay. 
So if there's any question, shall we check if there is question in Facebook? Yes. So just one note, if you if you are thinking in your mind, should I stop or should I continue? The answer is always stop. <laughs> so if we already think about it, it means it's already too much. It's a good point. And of course, with, when the groomer do it, a lot of things, a lot of time it's okay because they're very fast, they know what they're doing, so the dog feels sure. Whereas when we hold, we kind of like, Oh, maybe this angle. Oh, maybe this angle. And then like, oh, we have to hold this like this. And then you pull the leg up and it's, so it's just very different on how a professional groomer handle the dog, which gives them certainty. You hold this way and you lift it up and they know what's going to happen. Rather when you do it, they like lift this up, um, him here. It's like, oh, I still cannot see it. And you lift up a bit higher. So it's just, <laughs> you, because we're not sure, the dog also know that we are not sure. So it's good to break it down. Okay, let's see. Is there any comment? Okay, the comment is hope pet grooming will resume soon. So. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, I hope I hope so too. Let me see if there's anything else. Do I miss anything? Uh, and us adding on with another question. Um, let me see. Uh, I have been secretly cutting his nail and cleaning his paw after work. Yeah, so, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by secretly, um, but if the dog doesn't get traumatized and doesn't try to run away, it could be okay. But if you're doing, if you're doing secretly and the dog actually like pull away and start to run away, um, you're just um, building association that nail grinding or nail clipping could happen after walk and it could happen here, it could happen at any possible time. And it just makes the dog's life a bit more uncertain that way. <laughs> so it depends on the dog, uh, how the dog respond to that. Because uh, what she mentioned is she just cut one or two nails, which is a good point. You just cut one and then that's it, right? So if the dog is fine, cut one nail and then he's like, oh, okay, yes, play, good. But if you see him start to run away and then you start to doing in various area when he's sleeping, when he's uh, just came back from work, when he's eating, then you're actually introducing a lot of unpredictable um, thing that could happen at any time. But if there is no aversive response and you just cut one nail and the dog doesn't try to run away, it may be okay, but it depends. I have to see it for myself. All right. So I guess we are done with uh, most of the questions. Um, mm -hmm. Do we still have anything else to share with regards to nail grinding and filing introduction? And does anyone have any other questions? If not, I might go back to the question uh, asked earlier about the sanitary area one. Okay. Okay, and then any other questions from now on, we will uh, answer that after after today. Then we'll get back to, to you individually or through social media. Right. So let's get back to the earlier question about the wee wee area, okay? Uh, technically, right? Okay, chocolate is actually here. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna do anything like secretly, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. So maybe we can explore because for male and female dogs is different, okay, for the wee wee area. So I'll just show you quickly for male dogs and then for female dogs, maybe I'll do a quick diagram so you can understand. So for chocolate, why right? Okay, usually for the wee wee area. Okay, so like even in this position here, right, I can expose the wee wee area. Can you see? This is the wee wee area, okay? Not very clearly. Like, can you see the wee wee area here? Oh, yeah, I can see it. So like, so in this Stop. position, right? <laughs> Exposing his private area. <laughs> yeah, life, I know, right? So we just, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so, so that's how, I mean, he's, he's scared. He just got a shock. So, okay, just quickly, right, share with you, okay? This urine area here, when we shave, shave it like this. So, mm -hmm. along, 
along the urine area. Okay, and yeah, then, and the, then the setting on the shaver you can set to the longest. Okay. Yeah, so he's actually a bit startled because of this. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanna actually shouldn't have uh, catch him at that moment, but yeah, just to show you guys quickly, right? So the urine area. If it's like this, if this is the wee area, you do it this way. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And sometimes the lipstick come out, so yep. if that happens, we should stop, right? We should wait until it has, you know, yeah. retract. Yes, please, please don't shave when the lipstick is. Yeah. Yeah, that one is very very dangerous. And also, let's look at the female, female one, right? For the female, for the female dogs, usually the wee wee area is here. So um, this dog is not very, it, it's very hard to maneuver this part. So I'll just show you how to use the shaver when you are at that area. Um, There's one comment that you need to draw a bit bigger. So. Oh, sure. no problem. Yeah. So this is the urine area for females. Usually it's, can you see? Not really. Do you want to use the whiteboard? Yeah, let's do that. So for those that can see. There's uh, some glare. Yeah. So for, for the urine area for females, it's usually like that. And then after that, this is the legs. Uh, no, it's not so not so big. I'm sorry. No, okay. I think it's okay. This one you can see. Oh, you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right. So the back legs. Okay, from the back. Mm -hmm. it, the urine area is like that. Okay. So this is the urine area. Okay, so when we shave this area, right, let me just go back to the video mode. Okay, so let's say, let's say this is the urine area for female, okay. The shaving, Maybe you can use the end of your slicker brush or something. Yeah. Brush. Okay, just let's say this is the urine area. Okay, it's down. So when we shave, we will shave along the urine area. But then for females, right, there is a slit, right? So the area try not to poke in, try not to let the blade like touch it. So we are just gently removing the excess hair around it. It doesn't need to be like totally bald. You still can have a bit of hair around. You just want to remove the excess. So the setting, you can set to something that is not so short and close. You just want to get rid of the excess so that you can clean it better and just shave it like downwards. So for males, right, you just shave it along. So for females, it's the same thing, but you just shave it downwards. Okay, you just want to clear the hair around that urine area so you can, so they can have better hygiene. Yes. So I was, I was um, last time, you know, I always shave it like bald. But then I realized when you leave some hair, it's actually better when they pee. They don't splash. Mm -hmm. They kind of follow that hair. Same for the female as well. So I, I guess I'm not a vet or a groomer, but based on personal experience, if you leave a little bit of hair, the pee tend not to splash everywhere when they pee, especially if they lift up their leg. So it, it would just go one stream, but not like, you know, spray everywhere. Yeah, so, yeah, dog owners can try, you know, you can leave a bit of hair at the end, but uh, the excess, we want to remove so that they can have better hygiene, sanitary areas. So I hope that actually answered uh, that question earlier, and we, we probably answered all questions today. Hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, he needs a diet class. From oh. Paris. Who needs a diet class? Baby. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I hope uh, uh, all the dogs can come back to puppy school 
I mean, I didn't know how much I miss them until this stops. And then I'm like, ah, oh, I really miss not just the dog, but just talking to the dog owner. It's, I mean, it's, it's a nice, like, so now I end up just talking to Desmond, <laughs> you know. So really glad we have this platform to be able to still see our, um, our clients and, and hear about their dogs and their stories. Hmm. So if you guys have anything that you want us to discuss, you just can put it in the Q&A or in the chat and then we'll look through it and see um, what what we can come up with uh, next week. I think um, we, we are still close until at least, is it 1st June? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So moving forward, like, like what Christina said, uh, if anyone has anything they want us to cover, and it, uh, quite crucial, for you to uh, learn more during this circuit breaker period to help your dog. Just feel free to let us know. Uh, you can type here, you can type on Facebook. Just let us know and then we'll come up with something to, to share again next week. Yeah, mm -hmm. shall we just wrap it up today? Thank you everyone. Yeah, so for, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you everyone. We, we today, for today we covered, uh, what, what did we cover? The earlier portion we covered about the, the nails. Evening. Shaving, okay, shaving of the body hair, the technical and the, the, the introduction. And then we also covered nail grinding and how to introduce the nail grinder and the, how do we help them uh, keep the nails uh, just short but not too short, okay, just follow the rule of thumb. And then hopefully all these tips that you learn today, you can make use and help your, your dogs have a better physical welfare during this uh, circuit breaker period. Hmm. I really enjoyed uh, sharing with all of you and uh, yeah, we'll probably see you guys next week again. Yeah, just remember if your dog is extremely fearful or really anxious, uh, you may need to look for professional help and these sessions are not a replacement for them. Yes, that's very important. If not, we will see everyone again next week. Okay, okay. thank you. Bye. Bye.